Hello, I'm Dr. William Fabian. I'm a pediatric and adult gastroenterologist here at Mayo Clinic, and I'm the director of the Pediatric Inflammatory Bowel Disease Group. I've been spending some time trying to come up with some short, hopefully educational videos that are meant to inform the pediatric patient and their family a little bit about the disease, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. Um, this session today is to talk about what's on the horizon, what's, what are we sort of thinking of beyond what's currently available with a prescription. And that is not going to be an all-inclusive list because we're not going to spend but more than a few minutes talking about this, and certainly more discoveries are coming. I would say generally the field of inflammatory bowel disease is moving much towards a personalized approach. So as we understand more and more about the right genetics, the right immune response patterns, the right microbiome, the bugs that live in our gut or the functions that they do, as we understand more about that, I believe we're going to be able to personalize therapies in a way that's going to be more effective, safer, of more value and more efficient for our patients and their families. So in that space, I would say that there are a few newer ways that medications work or mechanisms of action that probably bear a brief discussion. We know that there are a variety of medications out there that block slivers of cytokine signaling networks. If you don't know what cytokines are, you'll need to refer to a previous video where I went into this, but briefly these cytokines function as communication networks between immune cells. And we've been able to utilize medications coming into the clinic to block specific signaling pathways and help patients with inflammatory bowel disease. That is getting more and more specific, more and more personalized. An example of this would be um, currently available agents, at least in the adult practice, for example, ustekinumab, blocks two cytokine signaling networks, the so-called IL-1223 pathway. There's a variety of agents that are on the horizon that are going to be more tightly focused on that IL-23 side and even some adapter molecules downstream of IL-23. So more specificity there. I think another move in the, um, in the therapeutic arsenal, if you will, of inflammatory bowel disease is a desire to get away perhaps from so many infusions and injections and the hope potentially that we can start treating patients by mouth with oral medications. So moving away, perhaps, okay, at least new strategies and alternatives that are away from the so-called biologics, okay, the medications that have to be raised in a biological system, be it a cell or, or an animal. So small molecules are, are what I'm talking about, inhibitors that one can take by mouth. A good example of that would be uh, tofacinitimib, which is a newer medication that's on the market to treat adult ulcerative colitis. Um, that medication is currently undergoing testing in children as well. But this would be a good example of a newer oral therapy on the market. It inhibits um, a variety of small adapter proteins that are downstream of these cytokines that I already talked about, the so-called JAK inhibitors, J-A-K, JAK inhibitors. And we're going to see a lot more action in this arena, I think, as these medications get more and more specific to precisely the type of JAK that we want to inhibit. So that would be an advance, I think. There's other types of newer oral therapies that are currently in clinical trials in adults that block how cells move, how they traffic, okay? So we know there's already an agent on the market to treat adults with inflammatory bowel disease, again, under study for children with inflammatory bowel disease. This is vetolizumab. This medication blocks trafficking. And there's a variety of other medications that are going to be coming out in the, in the near horizon that also block how these cells traffic. But there are other ways to block how cells traffic, and some of those can be blocked with an oral therapy, the so-called S1P1 receptor antagonists. So I think we'll see more activity in that field as well. Finally, moving away from sort of pharmacologic or pharmaceuticals, there are certain cell therapies that are making their way into the clinic. This is probably more advanced in people that have complications of Crohn's disease, so-called fistulae. We and others have had um, experimental experience um, in treating fistulae with, with, with cells or stem cells, if you will. And I think you'll see a lot more of that in the coming years um, as well. And I would say, finally, being able to manipulate our microbiome 
uh, the bugs that live in our gut. Either who's there, what colonies are there, or what they're doing. I see that probably also in the relatively short-term horizon. And that space could be in either um, uh, um, uh, the FMT or, or uh, fecal microbial transplant studies. There's been a lot of activity in that space. Um, not much yet that's been terribly conclusive, but a lot of excitement in that space. And then the field of prebiotics, being able to take medications by mouth that are either uh, a dried component of the microbiome or a, a, a biological product that induces the bug to do a certain thing, make a certain response, and, and that hopefully having a response on the immune system. So I would say probably um, that thinking in the, in the three-year horizon, we're going to see, um, I think, more oral therapies coming onto the market, JAK inhibitors, um, uh, S1, P1 receptor antagonists. And I think we're also going to be seeing some novel cellular therapies in the market. Um, again, right now, mostly for fistulae, but eventually, hopefully, for luminal disease or disease of the bowel, the intestine. And then also to probably more excitement and interest in how we can regulate our microbiome um, uh, to gain remission and maintain remission over time in a safe way. So I appreciate your attention and thanks for listening.